So traders, happy Monday to everyone. Well, it's Monday for me anyway, here in Down Under in Australia. And I'm getting really, really excited for the week ahead. So what I'm going to be doing today is I'm, I'm personally have just opened up the charts to get my mind right and what I'm looking for for the rest of this week. So I'm going to be going through the markets live in front of you, or I'm going to be going through the markets as I would, as I would be getting ready for what's likely to come moving forward and some things I need to keep an eye out for. So I'm going to be going across all the markets and doing my research. And so this is probably going to be a bit, a bit more of an in-depth analysis and I'm going to walk you through it. So let's get straight into it. Don't place a trade based on what you'll see in this video because there is no guarantees of making a profit in the market. It takes you a long time to become a good trader. So this video here is just to educate you to become a much better trader. All righty, traders, make sure you grab that uh, that breakthrough trading course that I'm giving away for free. Um, and you can see all the, all, everything every, everything through there. Again, I used to charge for this, guys, um, but I'm, I'm giving away for free here. I'm probably going to be start charging it again soon. So if you haven't got it yet, guys, go get access to that. When you get access to that, you also get access to a webinar that I'm running as well too, where I'm going to be teaching you all the details to my trading system. So before I get into the market, I actually want to share something with you. Um, trading is 95% psychology and 5% mechanics. Um, and I know most people say like, John, what the hell are you talking about? Like, you know, no, that's what, what a lot of bullshit. No, it is. Okay. Because here's the thing. When, when, when you're trading, trading successfully um, is all about, um, is all about what I've found is this, is fine. What are the setups that you like taking, the patterns, and then waiting for them to appear in the markets? It doesn't matter how long it takes. What are the patterns and the setups that you like to take in the markets that you know you're very confident in taking with good risk management? And if you only took those, you would have a phenomenal trading career. That's what successful trading is all about. And it took me a long, took me over 10 years really to really start to figure that thing out, right? Um, it took me five years just to start to get ahead. But anyway, so the whole thing is, because I've been trading the markets for 18 years, right? So the whole thing is like, for me personally, it's like, what are we actually looking for? So for you personally, like, I want to give you a challenge, right? The challenge this week is, what are you actually looking for in a good trading setup? Um, or are you just going to trade because you heard a YouTube video or something that I say in today's video, which is going to be a market update? Are you, you going to trade just based on that? If you are, you are a moron. And you deserve to lose everything, and 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 I'm not going to apologize for that, because that's that's the lesson that I needed to learn. <laughs> Two, three, four, five, five. <laughs> I'm, I can laugh at it now, right? Because that that was the, that was that that was me, right? I can laugh at it now, but that that was me. So the whole purpose of that, guys, is that your success in the markets comes down from one. What is the setup really like? And that's that's five percent of it, right? Once you know, like this is this this is the pie here, pie, okay, and we've got the five percent. The five percent here is what? What is your setup? What does it actually look like on the chart? So if I actually bring, um, so I'll, I'll I'll bring it up in a minute. So five percent is what are you actually looking for in a good quality setup? And then the rest is what your patience. I don't care how long, if you have to wait a whole day, I wait a whole week, wait a whole month for that thing to appear in the market. Oh, but John, there's been no trades for a week and I need to take a trade. That's your problem, right? That's your problem. That's the reason why you suck as a trader right now because you can't handle your patience. I'm sorry, I didn't make the laws. I'm just telling you what you need to work on. And, ha and, ha ha and so I go, okay, well, John, cool. Well, how do I work on my patience? Probably, some of you guys might be thinking, John, weren't you supposed to be getting into a market update for us? Oh, yes, I am, but I'm trying to get you guys ready for the week as well too, right? Because guess what? This is my thinking as well too as I'm getting the week. Okay, what am I looking for? I need to be patient, right? How do you work on your patience? Oh, John, how do I work on my patience? Go sit in an ice bath for two minutes. And when 30 seconds kicks in and you can't handle it anymore and you and you just can't handle any pain and you want to get out, just be patient, <laughs> <laughs> right then you need to be disciplined right and discipline is as in like patient wait for the setup discipline you i don't care what you say you're only taking this one setup here what is that one setup that if you could if you could do anything th th that'd be the setup right discipline and then consistency what how are you trading the markets for me most of the time i like to look at the markets for the last hour of the u.s stock market 
That allows me to run my scans because I scan I, I scan over th- all, basically the entire stock market, all the different stocks and so on and so forth. Um, and my scanner that I, I again, my scanner that I run um, shows me all, uh, allows me to do that for my setup that I look for, right? And then in that time, I'm also checking out the current, um, the commodities, gold, silver, um, mining stocks. I'm, I'm, I'm checking all of that out generally. So I only trade around about an hour, hour and a half per day um, right now as I speak right now. I used to trade intraday charts like futures and forex a lot, trading the one minute charts, the two minute charts, five minute charts, stuff like that where I'd sit in front of the screen for four, five, six hours a day, but I don't need to do that, right? And you don't need to do that either. As long as I can, as long as I have the ability to check everything that day, what's happening with the crypto market, what's happening with the, the, the interest rates, what's happening with the commodity prices and so on and so forth, what's happening with that sort of stuff. And on this, oh, like, you could have your trading done, all that sort of stuff, and then make sure, and when, you, and, and when you do start to find good setups, guess what, that's where it's at. So this is your 95% here, right? This is your 95% of your success moving forward. And I know some of you guys are just probably turning off right now, and if you've stuck through, then well done, because I, I probably, if you actually want to do well, then this is what you need to do, right? It's not the system, right? Because the thing is, is that the system works, right? The system has a win-loss ratio. My, my, my system that I use has a 90% success rate, and it's actually true. It has a 90% success rate of generating at least a short-term profit. Now, what's a short-term profit? I'll get into that in a, 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 a minute, okay? But for example, for me, what am I looking for, okay? Now, this is something that I've, I've traded for a long time. I'm looking for this, right? So this is like a screenshot in a bear market like we are right now. And now you can flip it upside down to use it, use it for bullish setups, right? But here's what I'm looking for in my setup. I'm looking for this in the markets. What am I looking for? I'm looking for a strong moving average coming down. Then I'm looking for a pullback with all these small bars. I'm looking for a strong moving average coming down. Here's, a, here's two different types of markets, right? I'm looking for a pullback with small bars. And then all I'm looking for now is I'm looking for this setup here, right? Strong moving average, pullback with small bars, and then a strong bar like that. I'm looking for a strong bar like that. Then guess what? I'm entering here, entering here. There's a high probability that, there's a high probability that we're either gonna do this and then that, or we just go straight down and we go straight down and we actually generate and we generate a nice profit from that trade. That's what that's what I'm personally looking for. Now, I'm not telling you what to do because what I just said there, guys, means jack shit to you guys because it doesn't build confidence. You haven't seen that 10,000 billion times to build your confidence, right? So that's where you need to go to work. And if you actually want to learn more about this actual setup that I just walked through, guys, when you go get access to that free trading course, I give you access to a webinar as well too, and I walk you through all the steps to this actual trading setup that I look for. I walk through step by step by step, okay? So let's get into the actual stock market. Let's get into the, uh, actually, let's, let's start off with the, with the good old Dow Jones. So let's start off with the weekly charts. Most of you guys don't actually look at weekly charts, but weekly charts are very, very, very important to give us a clue on what's going on on the overall markets. So, the big thing that I'm noticing with the actual, uh, the weekly charts is no one's really in control through here, right? So we had a high, lower high, lower high. We had a high high. We've had a very, 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 very strong move to the upside. So that tells me that we're probably going to be getting ready real soon to have a re- a nice big drop in the market. So we may, even, it, it may, it, it may be blood in the, it, we may have, we, it may be um, a, a very strong down week this week, looking at this here because we've actually been going up for quite some time through here. So just remember guys, that, and I know some of it, it's, it's hard to understand, but markets markets move in swings, right? It swings, swings up, right? Swing up, swing down, swing up, swing down. You see how it, it just swings, right? We go through swings. So it, we swing down, swing up, swing down, swing up, swing down, swing up, right? Even if we, even if we do get a little bit of a pullback, to start a bull market, guess what? We're going. We're likely to get what? Get that pullback. The pull, or we likely get a drop, because that's what bull markets are all about. Again, the the actual second video in the actual this this trend analysis stuff here. I walk through like I think it's like a thirty minute video walking through all this sort of stuff here, because this is how markets work, right? And and so important. This is why my trading is so successful is because I apply analysis, apply my trading to how the markets actually work right? Not a gimmick or, a, or all that sort of stuff. So that's what we're seeing through there on the daily charts or weekly charts, shall I say. No one's, there's no true trend here, right? We're not going, we're not making lower highs for downtrend. We're not making higher lows for uptrend. So if I go to my daily charts here, um, again, what can we see through here? We can see that the market's going up. 
up and then now it's starting to do this thing through here so i would even if we do get a little bit more upside guys we're, it's a very high probability we're going to start seeing this here there's probably going to be it's going to come out real soon we just don't know when um but it's going to come out real soon and it's, and it's going to shock the market and maybe it's probably likely to be a very very um it's probably going to be what do you call it, like maybe blood in the streets um but we're probably have a, going to have a we're probably going to have a big down week here, right? We're very, 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 very on the high on the upside, and you'll be able to see that with the fear and greed index, which I'll talk about in just a minute. But again, just the just the nature and the laws of how markets work, right? When markets go up for a very long time, we're at least due for some form of pullback, right? We're gone up for a very, very, very long time. We're just due for some point. It's just nature laws of how the markets work, right? We just don't know when here is it here, or do we rally a little bit more? Then we get it, right? Either way, we're almost at the end, or we're getting towards the end, or we are at the end of this upper leg. So trying to buy it now is very risky. Makes sense, guys. So that's knowing that in the back of my mind. Let's go look at the S and P five hundred, and let's go look at the weekly charts. And the weekly charts are giving us something different here, right? Look at this here. So on the weekly chart basis, we are getting we are getting high, lower high, lower high. This still could be some sort of lower high. So we are actually in lower low, lower low, lower low. We are actually in a downward trend still in the um, on the S and P 500. The 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 Dow Jones is a lot stronger, but the S and P 500, as we still speak right now, is still in a downward trend. We're still making these lower highs. Uh, but if the if the S and P starts to break above this four thousand two hundred level, then that's going to tell us we're going through a bit of a shift right now. Okay, but until that happens, we're still in a very big bear market through here. Um, and then, as you can see, just by looking back here, last time we got a very strong rally, then we got the drop. We're getting a very strong rally. Are we about to start to see um, a bit of a? Are we about to, are we about to say, start to see this? So looking at this weekly chart, actually, I'll just notice this here. This will be this will be the key area for me. So around about this this three thousand nine hundred level. See how we had this was this was the low for this week here because this is a weekly chart, guys. This was the low for this week here. This was the low for this week here. And this was the low for this week. So that's the last three lows that's actually found a lot of support there. If indeed we do start to open up and we start to get something like this where we start to break down past that three thousand nine hundred level that would tell me that now we're breaking past the three major lows or the three major lows for the last three weeks it'll tell us that this overall upward leg is now coming to an end and then we're probably going to start to see something like that in the market so that's what i'm looking for on the weekly charts let's go back to the daily charts and again i'm just looking out for that looking out for that three thousand nine hundred level so if I drew a line in there, or you can see I've actually even got the got the got the triangle pattern there. So it's probably it's probably gonna be that level through there. So that three thousand nine hundred level. If we start to see three thousand nine hundred print, uh, which simply means we actually get to that, then that's what we're probably gonna see through there. We still are in this triangle pattern here that I've been talking about for quite quite some time. We haven't got the breakout the breakout yet. So if we squeeze our charts up, look where we're at right now. Like, look at this just squeezing right up, right? Like, this is just, wow, look at that. That's just, that's crazy, isn't it? Squeezing, squeezing, squeezing. We hit the resistance there. As you can see, it's hitting resistance there. So uh, we could start to get a very, 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 very strong breakout. Now, looking at the areas of, we, we see also this level through here. Notice how we actually had the resistance back here at 4,000. It actually hit it twice. There's one day, two days. Actually, it's probably a few times back here as well too, right? So this hit resistance here, it hit it there, and it came back up and even found support here as well too. So if indeed we do, and um, we don't know what's going to happen, right? But if indeed we do get something like this, and then we get something like that, what is that telling you? One, it actually broke below that support level. Secondly, it broke below that support level. So that'll tell me that this is probably getting towards the end of this overall upward leg. And then once we see that, we're probably going to see some more downside that comes. Once again, I'm more veering towards the downside, but um, but any, anything can happen. So looking at this here, um, I would see we're probably likely to get that more of a more of a top pattern through there. But if the Dow Jones does start, the, we do start to see that that at least that pullback or that drop in the Dow Jones, because we're due for that, then that may be the thing to start to drag all the other markets uh, down from there. Uh, so let's go have a. So that's the. That's the uh, S&P. Let's go have a look at the NASDAQ. So the NASDAQ is just the one that I'm really, 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 really excited about because I think this could be the big short of the year um, or big short of 2020. This is, could be this could be the big short of 2023 for me. Um, 
And and so firstly, we can see here, we're actually having these lower highs, lower highs, lower highs, lower highs, and we still could be getting a lower high here. So, um, and, and, and look and um, look how weak this level is here, right? And notice how when, even in, in a bear market, we have what? We have down, and then we have the pullback. We have the down, then we have the pullback, because the pullback, pullback is against the trend, right? And that's why we call it a, it's a pullback. It's a back again, pulling back against the trend, down, pullback. But then what happens is this. What happens if we get down, then we get a pullback like that. Down, pullback like that. Down, pullback like that. Do you notice, notice the differences, right? Notice how we're strong here, strong here. And then now, see, notice how we're actually, we're, we're not even, it's different, right? Through here. Look at this here. That was the pullback there. That was the pullback there. That's the pullback there. You, see, you notice the angle. The buyers are pretty strong here on the pullback, but the sellers come in. Buyers are pretty strong, sellers come in, and then now we're actually, it was like very, 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 very weak. So that's the first thing I'm noticing for right now. Again, um, the the uh, I believe the NASDAQ is probably one of those things that's going to be the biggest the biggest opportunity for what I call the big short of 2023. Um and uh, cause we and we may not get it right now, or we may it may start right now because we're obviously we we don't have that long for the rest of this year, um, and so uh, what I'm looking for is that we're probably going to start the once we actually break this ten thousand level, then it's it's going to be blood in the streets. Like we're going to start to see a free fall in the Nasdaq, and that's something we need to keep an eye for. Remember I said before in, the, in that table at the start of this video. Um, if you didn't skip it, remember I said before, patience. Patience is all about waiting for these things to set up and then we can go from there. Looking at the daily charts, and we've got pretty much the same sort of thing on, 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 on that big picture there, right? We can see we're moving down, we're squeezing up into this triangle pattern. But once we start the break below this 10,500 level, then we could start to see quite a big move coming in the NASDAQ. So we, this, is, this has been something I've been watching for now for the last, and when we talk about patience, guys, I'm always watching and waiting for things, right? So I've been watching this thing build up now for almost two months. That's what we call patience, right? Waiting and waiting and waiting for this thing to give me that entry signal so I can take advantage of it. Trying to short the NASDAQ now would be very risky. Why? Because we're, we're, right now we're still in this overall pullback phase and a lot of times the pullbacks can be very volatile. It could be up. It may even do something like that and it may not break down, right? So my thinking could be wrong. That's why I wait for confirmation in the markets and then we can take advantage of that. So that's what I'm looking for. Oh, that's what I'm seeing on the NASDAQ. Let's go. Let's go have a look at gold now and we see what's going, what's going on with gold. So the first thing that I do see happening with uh, with with gold is that we definitely did have this major level of support around the 1700 level, right? So we can see we had a big double top, big double top formation, um, and then we actually came up, we came down, and look at this here. This is where this is where it's getting really, really. This is where we're getting like into the false breakout scenario, right? So we had a lot of support levels through here, all the support levels through there, right? You can see even through there there even that level through there you can see that 1700 level was a very 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 strong resistance level and remember guys this is a weekly chart right so it represents one week so then it came down came back up and then we actually rejected where we actually rejected it at that 1700 level so that should have been the time for us to start to go down sideways and then continue that downward leg right but what did it do it didn't do that it got back above that 1700 level and then we actually almost tested it as support. Not last week, but two weeks ago. You see that? What does that mean? Oh, that means this whole thing here is a false breakout, probably gonna be like a final low. And then we're probably gonna to start to see, this is probably gonna be a start of the slingshot move coming to the upside. And so if you go look at the daily charts now, you can actually see that if I actually move my trend line up to, to match what's happened on the recent price action, you can see this set 1,720 level, this whole area here of resistance and resi support and resistance, resistance through here and then resistance through here and then we have major support level through there, right? What do we have through there, right? We now have, you can see now this, remember, because this whole thing here, here was the big false breakout, right? Now, what are we doing? We're starting an upward trend, right? Low, higher low. It's actually breaking past previous highs. What's going on? We're now starting an upward trend. The trend is now up. And we're now starting to see something like this as well too. So if I had to draw some trend lines, you want, if you want some more trend lines, actually I'll take that off the screen now. We don't need that. Uh, we don't need that as well too. That's that false breakout. 
if I had to draw some trend lines, the trend line would be something like that. Just just one simple trend line going up. Um, it doesn't really matter, but that's what I'm seeing through there. So, but gold is probably going to make some inc inc just inc inc extraordinary moves. Gold is probably going to make guys. Um, now it may not make it, so don't go out there and place a trade. Best what just said there, right? And if you do, then make sure you have good risk management. Make sure you have a stop in place, and etc. 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 Right? Because gold could not be doing that. <laughs> we, um, even though I'm actually in gold, I actually got into gold. Uh, I actually bought more for my long term portfolio gold uh, last week myself. Um, so uh, for for my investing portfolio. Um, so we can see that that's what's going on. There we go. So gold's looking really, really, really bullish. Let's go have a look at silver. And silver's come out of the woodwork. Silver, strong like bull, right? Strong like bull. Look at silver. Silver looking really good, right? So we had this, we, we've had this final low through here. Uh, or we had this sort of low point through here, which is looking really good, by the way. So $22 was that major area of resistance, support, so on and so forth, right? You can see back all back through here. You can see all through, look at it all through there, all through there as well to resistance and then the resistance all through there, the 22 year level. And now we've actually got a very strong breakup. So is this going to be, is this whole thing here for the last many months, I say many months, cause I don't even know how many, <laughs> I'm guessing six, seven months. Is this whole thing just a big false breakout before we see a big move up? I wonder what, What's the Fibonacci retracement on that one? From that low there, that low there. Oh wow, look at that. Look at that. So that 50 to 60% of that entire move up, held, and now we're actually getting rid of, ooh, ooh, that could be powerful. Why? Because here's the thing. Um, this could be a bit of a springboard. I'm not saying this is, because gold is the much better pattern, right? Because gold, we are actually in that nice movement through there, right? But we had a move up, this whole thing could be a what I call a springboard pattern. A springboard pattern because it goes up, it goes sideways, and then we ball, and then we just like a bit of a springboard pattern. Um, and so, uh, so it's 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 something that I just noticed in the markets that 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 we get um, when when we're looking at that through there. Um, and so, if we go back to the daily charts, look at this here. We're breaking very strongly, breaking above that twenty-two dollar level, which is that level through there, as you can see. Um, yeah, looking real, look at that there. Resistance there, resistance there. Let's go to the last year. Look at that there. Now we're actually strongly breaking up above that level through there. So silver's actually looking, starting to look really bullish. We bounced off this level here. Bounced off this level through here. Support, support, look at that, all that major support. One, two, three, four bottoms. And now we're actually starting to see an upward trend. So really, really, really strong guys. Silver's actually starting to look quite good. We just need to break out of that 24 and then we're probably going to be off to the races from there. So we look at really, really good guys. Let's go have a look at the mining sector. It's a GDX. And the GDX to me has had a bit of a false breakout. Um, and a false breakout, as you can see, what I mean by that is, is see how there's, there's different levels of false breakouts, okay? So there's, there could be like where the market finds support, bang, 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 and it breaks out to the downside, right? And then we do nothing and then we get back in and then does something like that. This generally happens in big bull markets, and you'll see this here. There's actually a trade that I actually took a while ago where the market had a very big bull market up here, came down, suckered people in through here, and then went long, and then I was ready for this, and then it actually, because it was a false breakout. Generally, you get false breakouts that are, that are against the trend. That's that's generally what happens, or they're at the end of a move. And what I just said there, guys, the end of trend and at the end of moves, it's all about price and time different patterns. If you're not sure what I mean, Again, in that free trading course, there's actually two videos walking through in detail how to identify what I just said, talked about just there. I mean, I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to make this thing three hours long, right? But there are different things we can look out for. So looking at this, um, looking at the DDX, we had this high, high, we had this all this resistance level through here, resistance, resistance, and we had all this resistance level through here. Look at here, we came down, hit resistance, we hit it again, and now we're breaking back up again. Very strong. What does that mean? that we are, we could be getting ready for a really big move or we could be getting ready for a big move to the upside or we get one last little pullback to then reset and then and then have a bit of a springboard. So this is actually looking really, really bullish guys on the GDX here. So let's actually go look at the daily charts. And once again, you can see how that, that was just below that level through there. And and this is, when you see this guys, it's, it's, it's called a false breakout pattern. 
And generally when, what happens with these false breakout patterns, you get this pattern here. Once we get once we get back inside the channel, then it's the other side of the channel that we're likely to run to. Um, so again, just, just go do your testing on that. You'll be able to see that. And GDXJ, which is my baby in a sense, um, if you guys don't know, this is uh, the GDXJ is the one that I, I'm heavily invested in myself right now. Um, and you can see how we've got a lot of resistance all through here, resistance, resistance, resistance. And, got, and then we have a lot of resistance, resistance, resistance through here. And then now we're actually breaking back up as well too. What's that causing? Causing through this whole thing through here to be that false breakout. And now we're actually getting back above it and we're starting to see some strong moves. Um, so we, this actually could start to continue back up from there, get back to the other side of the channel. Um, and then that's what we're seeing through there. But on the GDXJ, the, the, the big, this is the big pitch. This is the weekly chart we're looking at right now. On the big weekly chart, what we're looking at right now is that possible false breakout breaking below this pattern here. And but then I do see, and this is the reason why guys I've been harping on, and you guys know yourself, right? Even last year, even last year when the crypto mania was happening, I'm like, don't touch the crypto market, right? You've been watching me last few years, you know exactly what I'm telling the truth. Actually, you know what? Leave a comment below. Um, and let me know if you were watching me last year when I was saying, if you want to buy something, buy gold. Don't be touching the crypto market, right? Um, and I just, I told everyone not to, don't touch the crypto market, not now. Um, it's, it's, it's not, not, not a good time. Um, so if you were around last year when I was saying that, leave a comment below. I'd love to see who's my long-term OG fam. Um, but I do see that this is probably what we're, what we're likely to see um, coming out of the mining sector. I see extraordinary quality moves coming from now through the end of 2030. 2030, John? It's going to take that long? Like, no, you numkun. <laughs> numkum. <laughs> Knucklehead, right? I'll be a bit nicer. Knucklehead. No, you knucklehead. It, bull markets take time, right? So I say 2030, we're likely to get up here. But for it to get up to 180, it's probably going to do something like this. Right, and then it may start big moves from here and then have a pullback. It's gonna do something like that, right? It's, gonna, it's probably likely to take its time. We're gonna get the pullbacks. We're gonna get the trend, right? It's like, well, why don't I just wait for 2030? It's like, because things take time. Big moves generally take time. Even in the crypto market, right? Even though crypto market made 600% return, that still did that over the course of six to 12 months, right? Um, so, I don't know when the big moves are going to happen in the mining sector. I'm very confident they're going to happen by we by the time we actually get to 2030. I don't know when. So all my job is is what I what I believe is that my job is to be in it. So when it does happen, I can capitalize on it. Just the same with the crypto market, right? You if you were in the crypto market, you were just in it. So when it did happen, you can capitalize on it. Makes sense. Um, I personally just hope it doesn't happen right now. I personally hope we just. I personally hope for myself. I personally hope we just do something like this until 2024 and then we start to break out like that, something like that. Um, if we can get like that after the, after the 2024 of the elections, then um, then that's going to be probably one of the one of the greatest trades I'm going to put on myself because um, then I can start to look at doing things like options where I can buy long dated options and then when the markets, if the market does do this, then... Um, uh, it just it's it's going to be just one it's just going to be one of the most incredible moves it's going to have seen and we're talking like tens of thousands of percent increases in the options if it does do that um and we're talking life-changing life-changing results so that's something that i remember i said before guys about patient right i'm being patient i i, I might have to be another I might, I might have to be a patient um for this particular setup that i'm watching for um, I might have to be patient another few years for, for me to really get into um, taking a trade on that there. So um, so that's what I'm looking at through there, guys. Let's go have a good look at the actual, um, and I'll finish, this, I'll finish this off now with the good old Bitcoin um, market as well too. So let's go have a look at the Bitcoin market. I could go through all the different markets, guys, like the interest rates and stuff like that, but um, this video is almost 30 minutes long right now. It's probably 30 minutes long for you guys, so... Um, I want to give you guys a bit of an update across the good old Bitcoin market. So the Bitcoin market is 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 doing doing a few things right now, right? So we had this breakdown, breakdown, uh, oh sorry, support, support, and now look what's happened, right? We actually came down and now we're going sideways. This is the do or die area for Bitcoin. Do, which simply means we get back above, right? And for you guys that have watched this entire video all the way through, give me a I love golden cookies in the comment section below because you you are the you are you are the man. 
a woman, <laughs> right? If you watch this entire video all the way through, um, I love golden cookies. Um, and so if we do get that, what does that mean? What, what did I talk about with the mining sector? What did I talk about with, with what happened with gold, right? If we get below the support level, and then we hold and we get back above. Guess what? That's a false breakout. This actually could be the end of the down move on Bitcoin before it's an up move. I know that sounds crazy, but they, that could be. So if we get something like that, and then and then we'll actually get it. We'll start to get a breaking below, above that level. We then probably have. We're probably going to start to have a nice move up from there, um, from the good old Bitcoin from there. But that's what's happening there on the daily charts. When we look at the daily, oh, sorry, the weekly. This is the weekly charts. When we go look at the daily charts, the daily charts are giving me something different, right? Because when I bring on my moving average, do you remember? Do, 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 you, do, do you remember the chart that I actually mentioned to you a while ago? Like what? Am, right. So what? What am I personally looking for? Do you remember? Remember I said before I'm looking for, I'm looking for the moving average to be what? Let's actually see if I can stream this. Up. There we go. Right. So I'm looking for the moving average to be trending down. I'm looking for a sideways with small bars. Right. Remember I said before. Look at this here. I'm going to bring this back up from, from the start of the video. Remember, remember this chart here, right? I'm looking for what? I'm looking for strong moving average come down. I'm looking for a pullback and then I'm looking for a large bar. Strong moving average coming down. Looking for a pullback. Looking for a large bar. Right? So that's what I'm looking for myself. Look what's happening through here. Ah, oh, we're not getting a strong moving average. Right? It's still pretty flat overall. Um, but we're starting to trend down from here and we're getting these sideways small candles. If indeed, if indeed we do get something like that out of the good old Bitcoin market, then we're probably going to start to hit the the ten to maybe six thousand level coming out of that there, and that could be for you guys that can short Bitcoin, which I'm very privileged that I can. Um, then, uh, then, then that that could be a really, really, really good opportunity uh, as well too. So that's something I'm watching for right now. If we do break up from here in Bitcoin, then that's going to confirm the false breakout on the weekly charts, and probably going to see a lot more move. But if we don't and we continue going sideways and then we get that breakdown bar, look out below.